What we have here is two different patients getting aortic root shots in a cardiac catheterization lab. You know we are in the aorta because of the pigtail catheter and the coronaries light up. This patient's root looks funny because of a DKS, but we're going to ignore that. Notice something different between these two pictures. This trash. Those are aorta to pulmonary collaterals, AP collaterals, blood vessels that branch off the systemic arterial circulation to supply the lungs. Now, I found the worst image I could for dramatic effect. Often they look something more like this. But no matter what they look like, AP collaterals can cause major problems for our patients with single ventricle heart disease. AP collaterals can be divided into two categories, congenital and acquired. Both form for the same reason. The lungs are greedy little and if they don't think they are getting enough blood flow from the heart, they will take it from anywhere else that they can. In the case of congenital AP collaterals, the lungs' thirst for blood is actually a survival advantage. We see this most often in children with pulmonary atresia, when the right ventricular outflow tract doesn't form and there is no direct connection between the heart and the lungs. Most of the time, there will be a patent ductus arteriosus supplying the pulmonary arteries, so the lungs are satisfied and collaterals don't form. But if there is no PDA, the pulmonary arteries may not develop at all, but the blood still has to get to the lungs from somewhere. Collaterals don't form out of nothing. These are arteries that already existed in the embryo to supply the lungs prior to development of the main pulmonary arteries. When the PAs begin supplying the lungs, these embryologic arteries regress. But if the PAs don't develop properly, these arteries grow to fully supply the lungs. So you get situations like this when the blood supply to the left lung is from a vessel coming off the subclavian artery. These are called MAPCAs, Major Aorta Pulmonary Collateral Arteries. The surgical and postoperative care of these patients is complex and covered in detail in my podcast, Healing Hearts. I want to talk more about the other type of collateral, the acquired AP collateral. These form after birth in response to decreased pulmonary blood flow and cyanosis. The classic example and the patients that seem to give us the most trouble are Glenn's. In Glenn's single ventricle physiology, the superior vena cava is attached to the pulmonary artery and supplies blood to the lungs. While in normal two ventricle hearts, the same volume of blood goes to the lungs and to the body, in the Glenn there is usually less blood flow to the lungs since they are only getting blood from the upper body. The patient is cyanotic with saturations in the high 70s or low 80s. This is the perfect setup for AP collaterals to form. These collaterals are formed from blood vessels that normally exist, but then enlarge substantially as the lungs demand more blood. With collaterals, blood flow to the lungs increases, which raises the patient's saturations. But in the long run, that may not be a good thing. That extra blood flowing through the lungs is oxygenated and returns to the left atrium. But because the blood in the collateral is already partially oxygenated, this is inefficient, and the extra blood to the heart increases the volume load and the work of the heart without much benefit. Patients with single ventricle heart disease are already at risk for systolic and diastolic dysfunction, so this increased work may be problematic. The flow from the collateral is also at systemic blood pressure. This raises the pressure in the Glenn circuit, making it harder for blood to flow through the Glenn. Increasing the pressure in the pulmonary arteries can make it more challenging for the patient to move on to the next surgery, the Fontan, as they need low pulmonary pressures for the Fontan to work. AP collaterals may be suspected if arterial saturations are unusually high or there is evidence of high blood flow through the pulmonary veins. It's not really possible to detect AP collaterals by chest x-ray, and acquired collaterals can be challenging to see by echocardiogram. So then we are stuck with going to the cath lab for diagnosis and treatment. The definitive, and really only, treatment for acquired collaterals is to plug them up in the cath lab. While that decreases the pulmonary blood flow, the circumstances that led to the collateral formation still exist. So new collaterals can form, leading to repeat trips to the cath lab and repeat coiling, ending with a chest x-ray that looks like this. Despite the theoretical benefits of reducing AP collateral burden, at the time of this video, there are not published studies showing changes in outcomes with coiling. So this practice is center and surgeon dependent, like so much of what we do.